Hello there guys, this is going to be a video on tuning the crown. Now, really quickly before we get started, this video is going to be quite long and I'm going to be splitting it into two parts. Part number one is showing you how I do all the tuning, all the setup and all of that. Then part two is going to be the results and a little shooting. So if you're not interested in the methodology, you feel free to skip this one and watch the second one. Secondly, this method isn't mine. I didn't invent it. I'm not sure exactly who did, but I read it on a forum just after I started getting into messing around with air rifles. So, I just wanted to point that out. It's not my method, I didn't invent it. But I'll leave a link to where I found it in the description. Hello there guys, this video is going to be on the crown and today we're going to be tuning it. Just a couple things I want to get out of the way straight away. Number one, it is your personal responsibility to make sure your rifle complies with the sub 12 foot pound rule. That means the muzzle energy of your rifle, if you're in the UK of course, must not exceed 12 foot pounds. It's vital that you stick to that rule and any settings that you see me put on my rifle aren't necessarily going to work for yours. All rifles are different, all barrels are different and there's just far too many variables for there to be a blanket one setting for every rifle and secondly there are loads of different ways to tune a rifle this is just the method i'm going to be using and that works for me it's no better than any of the other ones it's no worse than any of the other ones it's just the way i tune my rifles you may tune them differently that's up to you right now that that's out of the way i'll talk a little bit about the setup and show you around right so here's my setup i've got the bottle clamped with some rubber in the vise. This is a nice big vise, but I'm not gripping the bottle very hard at all. The rubber is gripping it, so the vise is basically loose. You don't want to be squeezing these carbon bottles. They can crack and cause you all sorts of problems, so just be careful if you're doing it this way. You could use a gun vise, although for the crown, we have to keep it outside the stock to adjust the hammer spring. I've also got the Keller gauge on the regulator gauge so we get an exact regulator pressure. That's not mandatory. You can use the gauges that come on the rifle as standard. However, this one is super accurate and I know the reading on it is going to be right. Got my pellets down there. You need a lot of pellets when you're tuning. And then finally, we have the chronograph. Now this one is the scan and it's probably one of the most accurate chronographs out there. So that's why I'm using it. It's not very convenient as you have to read the feet per second off this little screen here and it doesn't have the features of some of the other chronographs like graphing and all that sort of thing but it's nice and accurate and we'll be able to use it properly for this application. I would use the FX one however in the garage it gives me spurious readings. It reads both low and erratically so we're not going to be using it in the garage it does work fine outdoors but in the confined space of the garage with a near backstop it doesn't work so so we're not going to be using it okay then before we start there's some fundamentals that we need to understand before we can start tuning this is just a simple graph i drew up to better illustrate the point however i will be linking a forum post in the description that explains all of this just in case I miss anything or you want some more information. Okay, so the basics of this graph are as follows. For a set reg pressure, there is a maximum amount of power that reg pressure can produce. That is illustrated in this diagram by this top line here, better known as the plateau. We have hammer spring tension on the bottom axis here and feet per second on this axis. Once we get to this point here, increasing the hammer spring tension provides no additional or very little additional feet per second as we are extracting the maximum amount of power we can out of that reg pressure. On this side of the graph, this is our down slope. This is what you would typically expect from a PCP regulated air rifle. The less hammer spring tension, obviously the lower the feet per second. We are interested in this point here. So in our tuning efforts, it's our goal to tune within this part of the graph here. This part is known as the knee of the curve. Around the knee of the curve will produce the best results for a regulated PCP air rifle for this style of tuning. Now you'll note 
I haven't actually put any numbers on this graph. It's not drawn to scale and it's purely for demonstration purposes. In the real world our graph will probably look a little different from this but the basics are there. When tuning we're looking for the plateau and the knee. Right, so we've done a couple of different things to get to this point before we start tuning. Number one, we've made sure the rifle is mechanically sound. It's very important to do this. Make sure your regulator is working. Make sure all the O-rings in the rifle are good. And generally make sure the rifle is sound. I've also cleaned my barrel before I start. And I've opened a fresh tin of pellets. Now obviously it's important to use good quality pellets. You don't want to be using super cheap pellets that may vary in pellet weight thus giving you random readings on the shot string. In this rifle I'm going to be using JSB Schultz. Now an 8.44 grain pellet, obviously 177. Once we know the rifle's mechanically sound we can focus on the tune. Now you're free to play around on this curve all you like. Down this end of the curve you get varying feet per second issues. However, you'll obviously be very efficient on air as you'll have a very low hammer spring tension in relation to your regulator. The further up you go, the lower your theoretical extreme spread should be. Being further on this side of the curve will reduce your efficiency per shot. Obviously, if we're all the way over here, we might have a very, very low extreme spread. Our air usage will be very very great. That's why the near the curve is so important. We gain both the low extreme spread of the plateau and some of the efficiency of the down slope. Obviously you can't have it all. There has to be a balancing act between the two but when we're in this general area we're in the right place. Now it's quite common on forums to see people automatically blaming the regulator or their rifle for being inconsistent or having a very high extreme spread and sometimes it's absolutely the case there could be a problem with the regulator causing you varying feet per second however the other thing to keep in mind is the tune if you're all the way down here doesn't matter how good your regulator is you're not going to be getting a very good extreme spread as you're relying solely on the hammer spring to hit the valve exactly the same way each and every time and unfortunately with springs this just isn't possible. So a little more information before we start. The location of this plateau is controlled by your regulator pressure. So if your plateau is too high you need to reduce the reg pressure to bring it down. If your plateau is too low then you need to increase your reg pressure. This will become more apparent as we start tuning. The goal I'm going to be going for is a feet per second of 777. That seems to be sort of the magic number for 177 8.44 grain pellets. So that's the number I'm going to be tuning to. However, it's very important to experiment. Some pellets, some barrels, like different feet per seconds, and there's never going to be one tune that's going to be best for all rifles. They're all going to be different. Right, so with that said, let's get started. So unfortunately I only have the one camera so I can't do a picture in picture with one camera on the rifle and one camera on the chronograph. So what I'll be doing is showing you the chronograph and telling you what I'm going to be doing. So here's the hammer spring adjuster here and that's you done using a 1.5mm Allen key. Now I'll call out how many times I turn it and I'm going to count one turn as going in the top there. And all the way down that's going to be one turn to me so to start with with the hammer spring tension what I've done is I've wound it until there's just a hair of free play in the spring this I believe is the ideal setting as there's no preload on the valve and therefore there should be less hammer bounce however with a short barrel I don't think we're going to be able to leave the hammer spring at this setting if you have a long barrel crown you may need to wind this off a lot further to make sure you're under the sub 12 pound rule. It's important to start very very low and then work your way up rather than starting high and working down. Now with the regulator obviously I can just call out what regulator pressure I'm going to be using and that's that adjuster there and that's with a 2.5mm allen key. Right so just a recap of what we're going to be doing. 
I've started the reg pressure low. That's at 55 bar or just under. And what we're going to be doing is finding the plateau at 55 bar. We'll see what the feet per second is. Yeah, I'm guessing it's going to be low, but we will see. And if the plateau is too low, we're going to move it up by increasing the regulator pressure. So we'll start out at 55, find the plateau, and then see if we need to re-increase it. Right, so let's get started. Okay then, 55 bar on the regulator, first shot. 6.44, so we'll do a few more shots. Now we'll start increasing the hammer spring. And I think we're on the plateau for 55 bar. Now, as the power's too low, we're not going to be worrying about finding the knee for this setting. We're just going to be up in the reg pressure. So I think what we're going to be doing is going up 5 bar at a time. And I'll just do a couple dry fires to cycle the reg. Right, so now we're at 60 bar. We'll see where this hammer spring takes us. I'm pretty sure when the scan doesn't read like that, it's a duplicate reading. Normally, if the chronograph fails to read, it comes up with miss. So I think when you hear it shoot but you don't see the display change, it's because it's a duplicate reading. If we take an Allen key, poke it through the sensor one end, and out the other, it comes up as miss, miss, miss. So I think they're duplicate readings. Six. 670 roughly, so we'll take the hammer spring up another two turns, see where that gets us. So the powers rose just slightly, so we'll go up another two turns. Yeah, so we're still on the plateau. As we've been on the plateau for a couple times now, what I'm going to do is decrease the hammer spring using the power adjuster here. What we'll do now is we'll shoot a shot through the chrono and read it. If it's roughly the same as what we were seeing before we can wind off a couple extra turns on the hammer spring or go up with the regulator a bit more. So we'll see. So it's still roughly the same power. So what I'm going to do now is turn it down to four to see if that lowers the power. That's the first mega pellets done. So four seems to be still on the plateau. We'll try three. And three seems to have dropped it. So at this point I hope you can see what we're trying to do. We're trying to ascertain at what point we get the maximum amount of power for that set reg pressure. So at the moment we're still only set at 60 bar and our plateau velocity is around 670 feet per second. Since we need to be about 100 feet per second more than that, we need to increase the reg pressure to bring the plateau level up to where we want to be. We're going to take the regulator pressure up to 65 bar and see where that gets us. Again, just doing a couple dry fires in between the regulator pressure change to settle the reg down. So we're still on hammer spring setting number three and we'll see where this gets us. So we see there the power's dropped. What this means is the regulator is overpowering the hammer spring now. So what I'll do is I'll just increase the hammer spring setting to number four, see where that takes us. So you can see there it's a bit random, so we're going to go up to number 5, 694, 695, 693. So that's a very, very good example of the hammer spring setting. What we had before when we was on power setting number 4 was a very, very high extreme spread. However, just putting the power setting up to number 5 changed it to all three readings within five feet per second of each other. That would indicate that we're coming to the top of the knee or the start of the plateau. So that was 696 and we'll turn it to max and see what happens. 
I'm guessing the feet per second will increase very very slightly but not much and there we have it there 698 696 so in effect the feet per second hasn't increased and we're on the plateau so what I'm going to do is just take the reg up another five bar see where that gets us okay then so we've got the reg set at 70 bar now and the hamstring adjuster wheel is turned to max so we'll see where this gets us 714 so around about 715 to 720 so we'll take the hammer spring up another two turns in the adjuster screw 724 so we're still going up you'll see I'm not really taking too much time at these lower powers however once we get near where we want to be then we'll start taking the time we'll start mapping out things properly with a set number of shots and we'll take the average but for now as we're still a little ways off of where we want to be it's just a couple shots adjust so that looks like we're at the very very start of the plateau so I'll do another two turns to see where that gets us so another two shots and no real power increase so it looks like we're on the plateau for 70 bar what I'm gonna do is turn the power wheel down to number five and see how much that drops the power so dropping the power down to number five drops it a little bit but not much so that indicates to me that we're just on the plateau for our max hammer spring setting so I've turned it back to max now 725. You might be wondering why I did that then so I'll just quickly explain it. The power wheel setting is very useful to tell where you are in the plateau. If you turn it down and the power only slightly decreases that means you're pretty much on the plateau solidly. However if you turn it and the power drops significantly that means you're just on the end of the plateau. So a 15 feet per second drop means we're means we're roughly at the knee side of the plateau if we were over here changing the power wheel setting wouldn't change the power too much and if we were right here and changing the power wheel setting would dramatically decrease the feet per second so since there's a very little feet per second drop we can ascertain we're about just at the top of the knee here right so we'll increase the reg pressure and retest the feet per second 75 bar on the reg and the and the power wheel settings turn back to max so we'll do two turns on the hammer spring see where that gets us so a small power increase so we'll do another two so again a very 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 small power increase i would say we're on the plateau now but we'll do another two just to make sure so two more turns so we had one high read in there then the other two were fine so I guess we just had a light pellet in there but as you can see there them two last shots we're firmly on the plateau now so since that's only 10 foot pounds we'll re-increase the reg and we'll go to 80 bar this time Right, so 80 bar, still the same hammer spring setting. So what we'll do now is we'll just take the power wheel setting down to number 5, see if that drops the feet per second, which it does. Quite a bit so. Seems to be a bit random. So I'll turn it back to max and we'll increase the hammer spring setting by two turns. So a fair power increase, so we'll do another two turns. 7.54, so we'll do another couple turns. So the power is still increasing very, very slightly. So I think we're on the plateau now, but we'll do another two turns just to make sure. So them last few shots were obviously around the same point and we're on the plateau 
a plateau isn't, isn't always flat. It can have a slight rise to it. So to check what we're going to do is turn the power wheel down to number 5. See where that gets us. So a small power drop, roughly 10 feet per second. That's a good sign that we're on the plateau. So it looks to be the same. We had one higher one there, but again that could just be a light pellet. And the feet per second isn't changing dramatically. So I'm going to call that good for the plateau. And we can now go up with our reg pressure. So we're at 80 at the moment, so we're going to try 85. So 85 bar on the regulator and the hammer spring is where we said it last time. What I'm going to do is turn the power wheel down to number 5 and see what happens. So the power drops by roughly 20 feet per second. So what I'm going to do is put it back on max on the power wheel and add another two turns on the hammer spring setting. So 773, roughly the same as we were getting before. So I'd say we're on the plateau now. That's 85 bar on the reg. And that's just a little below our target feet per second. In my personal experience, I normally set the plateau at around 10 to 15 feet per second above my target feet per second. So in this case, we're looking for 777. So our plateau velocity needs to be at around 787 to 792. This is just a rough guide and it's what I've found works best. It does vary between guns quite a lot and some like to be lower on the knee and some like to be higher. Also depends what you're going for. If you're chasing super accuracy at 50 yards, you're obviously going to want the best extreme spread you can possibly get. If you're just blinking at 30 yards and you could get away with a higher extreme spread, then you could back it off. This would give you more shots and you'd be filling up your gun less often. There's always a little bit of a trade-off and there's never going to be one setting for all rifles. They're all going to be different. So I'm just going to add another two turns to the hammer spring to see where that takes us. No change in velocity. So we're definitely on the plateau now. So the next thing we need to do is increase the regulator pressure slightly. Now, before I increase it, as we're getting pretty close to the 12 foot pound limit, I'm going to reduce the hammer spring by four turns. What this will do is bring it down and then we can work back up again. We definitely don't want to be going over the 12 foot pound limit. And this is just the way I do it. So this is four turns off the previous one, still at 85 bar on the regulator. So a very, very small drop in power. So by the looks of it, we're just coming off the plateau. So our regulator pressure is now at 87.5. And I've just done a shot to confirm we're under the 12 foot pound limit which we are. So what I'm going to do now is turn the power wheel down to setting number 5. We'll see where this takes us. So the power has dropped quite substantially. So we're going to start increasing the hammer spring tension now to try and find the plateau. So we're back on max and I'm just going to do two settings, two turns on the hammer spring adjuster. So the power increased there, so I'll do another two, see what happens. So the power increased again, so I'll go another two. Right, so I think we're at the beginning of the plateau now. I'll do another two turns on the hammer spring just to make sure. Right, so that's our plateau for 87.5 bar. So, as I said before, my goal is to get the plateau velocity to around 790. Then, back the hammer spring off to around 777, and that should give us a very consistent rifle just off the plateau on the top half of the knee. This won't be the most efficient tune, but if I'm honest, the FX rifles are pretty good on air anyway, and with a 480cc bottle, you get plenty of shots out of a fill. So, what I'm going to do is take the regulator pressure up another bar or so and refine the plateau. Then we can readjust for the knee. So I overshot the regulator pressure a bit, I got to 90 bar, but 
as you can see there, we're at about 790, and that's on the max setting on the power wheel and the same hammer spring setting as before. So what we'll do now is we'll turn it down to power setting number 5 and see what happens to the power. So it drops off quite substantially and as you can see there it's bouncing around a bit. So we must be close to the plateau but not quite on it yet. So we'll do another two turns on the hammer spring, see where that gets us. So I'm definitely sure we're on the plateau now. What I've done is I've just went up another two times with the hammer spring and we're still under the 12 foot pound limit and the power hasn't increased that much. What we're going to be doing now is I'm happy that we're on the plateau and I'm also happy that we're around my target feet per second. So what I'm going to do now is reduce the hammer spring until we reach the 777 that I'm going for. We're only really looking for an average of around 777, it's not a number set in stone. But obviously I don't like running my rifles at this height. I would never take them up this close to the limit, except for tuning purposes. You never want to go over, and leaving a rifle this high is a bad idea, as changes in temperature will affect your regulator set pressure and may increase your feet per second. So it's vitally important that you're under that magic 12 foot pounds number. So as the plateau is set by the regulator pressure, we're no longer interested in the regulator pressure, only interested in the hammer spring. So we'll just start winding off two turns at a time till we get close to our desired feet per second. So no change in velocity, so we'll do another two turns off. So we're just starting to see the average feet per second drop now. Take it down another two turns, see where that gets us. Still dropping, so another two turns. Another two turns. Right, since we're getting close to my ideal feet per second, what I'm going to be doing now is taking one turn at a time and then doing 10 shots and taking the average. Don't worry, I'm not going to be showing you all 10. I'll just show you the, I'll just tell you the average. Okay then guys, that's going to about do it for this one. Now in part two of this video will be the results and I'll also do a shooting card. But I hope you enjoyed it, maybe learned something and I'll see you in the next one.